So what we looked at up to now is basically um, signals that is one dimensional. We basically have these measurement points and uh, the two signals can be of different durations, but it's essentially one dimensional signals. Um, now one popular use of dynamic time warping is to use it to compare sequences of vectors or um, if you want to be fancy, you can call it multivariate um, time series. And this is something that happens a lot. For example, early speech recognition systems would take two speech signals, extract um, sequences of vectors from the, those speech signals, and then do dynamic time warping on those sequences of vectors to figure out whether two signals contain the same word or not. And I just wanted to use that, this as a little bit of a, an example to actually talk about dynamic time warping on sequences of vectors. So you might know that um, speech is a relatively complicated signal. Um, this is just a little cartoon example of, of, of a speech signal. And maybe this is another signal here that's also a little cartoon example. And these signals are sampled normally at 16,000 points a second. But for a computer, that's normally not what we do. Normally, we convert them into some other feature representation, which is normally um, a vector and time series. And I've actually got another video that, that looks at how you would do that. But the point is that this red signal here will probably be represented by a series of vectors. Each of them may be something like 40 dimensions. And they go across time until the end of the signal. And the blue signal similarly will be represented by a series of vectors. Each of them may be um, 40 dimensional, um, each of them extracted maybe every 10 milliseconds, and uh, we go on until the last uh, vectors. And now we would actually like a way to compare vector, um, uh, vector time series or sequences of vectors with one another. I want to know how similar is this sequence of vec vectors to this sequence of vectors. And we can actually apply the dynamic time warping um, algorithm exactly as we had before. The only thing we actually need to figure out is how do we measure the similarity of a single vector with another single vector. And the lucky thing about that is we have a number of different ways to do that. So we need to figure out how are we going to represent a vector x with another vector uh, y. They're both They've got the same dimensionality. We just need to figure out how to measure um, the distance between them. And the cool thing is you can use uh, any number of different distance metrics. You can calculate the Euclidean distance between these two vectors. You can calculate the um, dot product. Or for speech, it turns out that often the cosine distance between these two vectors work really well. So. Let's look at an example where we actually do this on, on some real um, speech samples. And I'll do this all in the notebook. So here I'm loading in um, some audio. It's a, a single word that I said. And then here I've got another word that I said. And what we're going to do is we're going to align these two words. So this is the first word. Hello. And then this is the second word. Hello. OK, a little bit strange, deliberately so. And in a previous video, we looked at how we can extract features, these, um, these vectors for the two time series. So this is the first, this is the X sequence. Um, here we've got uh, our vectors are stacked along this direction. So this is one vector here, and then that's the next vector, and then that's the next vector, and so on. And there's 40, um, there are 40 dimensions to each of the vectors. So this is our X signal. Our Y signal is actually quite a bit longer. You remember because I said hello or whatever. Um, so it's a bit longer. And that's the cool thing about dynamic time warping. Despite it being so much longer, we can still figure out how similar these two sequences are to one another. Um, so here I basically take the features. Um, it's important here that here I calculate the distance metric. Um, the distance matrix between the two sequences. So I've got my X sequence, this sequence here, I've got my Y sequence, this sequence here, and then what I do is I calculate the cosine distance between each vector in the X sequence and each vector in the Y sequence, and that's then my distance matrix. 
I then actually pass in the distance matrix to exactly the same function that I used before. So just the same dynamic programming function. And from that, I get my cost matrix and my path that pops out. Um, and I can look at the overall cost, which is that last element in my cost matrix. And this has an alignment cost of 0 0.9529. And it's a little bit hard to say how similar that is. Uh, you know, what does that mean? But if you've got multiple signals that you're comparing to one another, then maybe you can compare different alignment costs. We'll actually do that in a second. Let's look at the alignment. So this is the alignment between those two signals. Here we've got hello and then hello. It's quite interesting to see how this um, signal was aligned. So if you look from around this point to this point, then you can see that most of the frames are basically aligned from this point to this point. There's a little bit of like maybe um, expansion here, but roughly speaking, they're like quite similarly aligned from there to there. And that's probably that ha huh sound that we have uh, at the beginning. You can actually see this in the features as well. This is the long vowel that we're getting. And what we see in the second part here is that we basically have to align this short O oh, well, here it's just going to be O. Oh. Here it's going to be O, oh, do you see there? And you basically have to warp this part of the signal onto this part of the signal. And the dynamic time warping does that for you. Let's look at a more extreme case, which make, might, might make this even more clear. So here what I've done is I've just quickly changed the code to load in a different uh, waveform for our X signal. Let's listen to that. Hello. Hello. Okay, so that's X, Y. Hello. 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 Okay, so this has the first part of the word kind of extended, and then this one has the last part of the word extended. Okay, this is the features for our X, the features for our Y. We calculate the distance matrix, we calculate the cost, we pass that into our dynamic uh, programming function, which gives us our cost. You see the cost is slightly higher in this case. And then this is the alignment between the two um, signals. So in this case, what you can see is that here we've got the ha, and here we've got this extended ha. And what you see is that that portion is aligned to this, uh, to this portion here. And then here we've got the kind of shorted low and here we've got the extended low and you can see clearly that this portion is aligned to that portion there. So a super cool way to, to look at how you basically warp one signal onto the other. I'm going to look at one more example. So in this example, let's listen at our X. Goodbye. Goodbye. And then our Y. Bye. Bye. Now, maybe before watching on, you can think what dynamic time warping is going to do with these two signals. So here we've got goodbye. Here you can see the I. Um, and then here we've got by. Actually looks quite similar, right? You can see that that and that is similar. But of course, in the by, the good is missing. And then if we look at the um, dynamic time warping output, you can clearly see that the by here and the by here it has almost got a frame by frame match to one another. But then what dynamic time warping had to do is it had to figure out what the fudge is going to do with this good. And it decided to basically just insert it here uh, on, the, on, this, on this signal here. So you can see the silence portion here is basically aligned to, to that portion there, almost exactly frame by frame, frame by frame. And then you've got this chunk, which just doesn't exist and it had to be squashed in and it was squashed in there. So quite a cool example. We can also look at the cost matrix between these signals. So here I've actually just plotted the cost matrix from, from the algorithm. And here you can see this diagonal line here, which um, it's roughly diagonal because the bias aren't exactly the same. If they were exactly the same, you would have this perfectly diagonal line here. But you can see that they're, they're being matched up. And then here you, you see where the good is basically being forced into the um, into the Y signal. And then here you've got the silence, which is at the beginning of both of the two utterances. Finally, let's quickly look at how you can use this approach to do something like uh, do isolated word speech recognition, for example. So isolated 
word speech recognition is I get a word in, a single word in, and I want to know what is uh, the word being said. One approach to do this is to maybe record a bank of words that we know what's being said. This first word is the word hello, the second word is the word hello, bye, cat, and goodbye. And then what you do is you get your new word in and you don't know what that word is. Okay, I know it's in the file name there, but pretend you don't know what that word is. And then what we do is we do dynamic time warping with each of the words in our um, basically bank of words. We find the closest one and then we predict that this word has the same label as the one that's closest by. If we've got a few thousand examples, maybe then we can do something slightly more clever. Instead of taking the single nearest neighbor, we can maybe take the five nearest neighbors or the 10 nearest neighbors, look at the labels of the 10 closest points and take the label that occurs most often within those 10 points and then classify this word as, as that label. But in this example, we're just going to um, just have this single nearest neighbor um, look up. Okay, so let's just listen to the word. You've, you've heard this word before. Hello. Okay, so what I've done is I've written a little loop here that takes this audio file and compares it to each of these audio files. We calculate the features for each of these audio files, um, calculate the distance matrix, pass in the distance matrix to our dynamic programming function, and then print out the cost, the final alignment cost. So our input is hello, but we don't know that. And let's see what the alignment cost is with each of these um, files. So what you can see here is that the alignment cost of hello with hello is 0 0.6, 0 0.95, 0 0.65, 0 0.56, and 0 0.8341. Now this is a little bit concerning, right? Because you would actually want one of these two to have the lowest cost because that's actually what matches the word. So this this classifier, this one nearest neighbor would actually fail because it would predict that the word cat is present in that utterance, which clearly it's not. So why does this happen? The reason for this is, let's just listen to this word cat. 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 Now, what do you notice? The word cat here is super short. And this is a problem because if you think about your cost matrix, when you have one signal that's very short, then your cost matrix will always be kind of smaller, at least along one of the dimensions. Because to get to the end of your cost matrix, you're just adding up numbers, right? That's what you're doing. You're adding up um, pairwise numbers until you get to the, to the end. If one of your signals are, is very short, then it really doesn't matter um, what the content of that signal is. The score is naturally going to be a bit lower. And that's because um, this is just a cost matrix from before. What you're going to have is along this dimension, you're just going to have fewer values that you're going to add up if your input stays the same. So this means we need to normalize the scores in a way. We need to do something to the scores to make it comparable. If I've got two sequences with uh, you know, one length and another sequence with a much shorter or much longer length, we need to normalize them in some way. And there's actually multiple ways to, to normalize the scores. One way to do this is, um, let's quickly look back at, at our cost matrix from before. One way to normalize um, in this example would be to ask, how long is my red path? How many steps do I need to take? I need to take one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight steps. To get to the end and what I do is I take my final score and I calculate an average score over those eight steps so I take that 0 0.5 and I divide it by the path length the length that I had to go through that's one sensible um, approach that you can take it's a little bit irritating because now you need to actually keep track of how long the path is so a quick hack which actually turns out to work quite well is to simply take the final cost and divide by n plus m. And that's one way to normalize it. Let's just write that down. So you take the n mth item and you then divide that by n plus m. 
And that's a sensible approach because if I have a very long signal, then here I'm going to divide by some bigger numbers, which means I get a lower score. If I've got a super short signal, whether it's the X or the Y signal, then I'm going to divide by a smaller number here, which means I will get a bigger overall value. So let's quickly look what happens when we do this in our nearest neighbor code. So I've actually done this before and I've just commented it out because normally I mess up my code when I do it on the fly. So let's uncomment that. And as a reminder, our input is the word hello. We don't know that. And then we calculate the alignment cost of each of those signals. Let's run that again. Um, obviously, all the scores get a little bit lower, and that's just because we're dividing by n plus m in each case. And what we see here is now let's just look for the lowest number. You've got 0.03, it's pretty, pretty low. 0 0.04, 0 0.04, 0 0.047, 47. So the lowest one is this one. So I will predict that this word here is the word hello. Let's just make double sure that that's right uh, in the in the code. Okay, yes, that's right, 0 0.03. So we would predict that the input word is the word hello. And that would actually be correct in this setting. So in this way, by normalizing, by looking at the normalized alignment cost, we have a one nearest neighbors isolated word classifier that makes a correct prediction in this in this one case. So I just briefly wanted to mention some of the references that I looked at when I had to learn about dynamic time warping for the first time. The first reference is from uh, Dan Jarofsky, and it's actually a lecture that you might be able to find on YouTube called Computing Minimum Edit Distance. Minimum edit distance is actually very closely related to dynamic time warping. It's sometimes called the Levenstein distance. And it really tells you how to align symbolic sequences, letters, for instance, to one another, and what the costs are of basically um, changing one of these symbolic sequences into the other. So you can see how it relates to uh, dynamic time warping, where dynamic time warping can be over continuous sequences or even vector series, as we've seen. The other reference that I looked at is Dan Alice's um, MATLAB code, which I really poured over the first time I had to figure out um, dynamic time warping. And then the last one is Wikipedia, which actually has an excellent dynamic time warping article. And a lot of the notation that I used in the this um, videos were taken directly from Wikipedia.